The myth of the apple of discord, story of the Trojan War. There was once a war so great that the sound of it has come ringing down the centuries from singer to singer and will never die. The rivalries of men and gods brought about many calamities, but none so heavy as this. And it would never have come to pass, they say, if it had not been for jealousy among the immortals, all because of a golden apple. But destiny has nurtured ominous plants from little seeds, and this is how one evil grew great enough to overshadow heaven and earth. The sea nymph Thetis, whom Zeus himself had once desired for his wife, was given in marriage to a mortal, Peleus, and there was a great wedding feast in heaven. Thither all the immortals were bidden, save one, Eris, the goddess of discord, ever an unwelcome guest. But she came unbidden. While the wedding guests sat at feast, she broke in upon their mirth, flung among them a golden apple, and departed with looks that boded ill. Someone picked up the strange missile and read its inscription, for the fairest. And at once discussion arose among the goddesses. They were all eager to claim the prize, but only three persisted. Venus, the very goddess of beauty, said that it was hers by right, but Juno could not endure to own herself less fair than another. And even Athena coveted the palm of beauty as well as of wisdom, and would not give it up. Discord had indeed come to the wedding feast. Not one of the gods dared to decide so dangerous a question, not Zeus himself, and the three rivals were forced to choose a judge among mortals. Now there lived on Mount Ida, near the city of Troy, a certain young shepherd by the name of Paris. He was as comely as Ganymede himself, that Trojan youth whom Zeus, in the shape of an eagle, seized and bore away to Olympus to be a cupbearer to the gods. Paris, too, was a Trojan of royal birth, but like Oedipus he had been left on the mountain in his infancy, because the oracle had foretold that he would be the death of his kindred and the ruin of his country. Destiny saved and nurtured him to fulfill that prophecy. He grew up as a shepherd and tended his flocks on the mountain. But his beauty held the favor of all the wood folk there and won the heart of the nympho anon. To him, at last, the three goddesses entrusted the judgment and the golden apple. Juno first stood before him in all her glory as queen of gods and men, and attended by her favorite peacocks as gorgeous to see as royal fanbearers. Use but the judgment of a prince, Paris, she said, and I will give thee wealth and kingly power. Such majesty and such promises would have moved the heart of any man. But the eager Paris had at least to hear the claims of the other rivals. Athena rose before him, a vision welcome as daylight, with her sea-gray eyes and golden hair beneath a golden helmet. Be wise in honoring me, Paris, she said, and I will give thee wisdom that shall last forever, great glory among men, and renown in war. Last of all, Venus shone upon him, beautiful as none can ever hope to be. If she had come, unnamed, as any country maid, her loveliness would have dazzled him like sea foam in the sun, but she was girt with her magical cestus, a spell of beauty that no one can resist. Without a bribe she might have conquered, and she smiled upon his dumb amazement, saying, Paris, thou shalt yet have for wife the fairest woman in the world. At these words, the happy shepherd fell on his knees and offered her the golden apple. He took no heed of the slighted goddesses, who vanished in a cloud that boded storm, from that hour he sought only the counsel of Venus, and only cared to find the highway to his new fortunes. From her he learned that he was the son of King Priam of Troy, and with her assistance he deserted the nympho Amon, whom he had married, and went in search of his royal kindred. For it chanced at that time that Priam proclaimed a contest of strength between his sons and certain other princes, and promised as prize the most splendid bull that could be found among the herds of Mount Ida. Thither came the herdsmen to choose, and when they led away the pride of Paris's heart, he followed to Troy, thinking that he would try his fortune and perhaps win back his own. The games took place before Priam and Hecuba and all their children, including those noble princes Hector and Helenus, and the young Cassandra, their sister. This poor maiden had a sad story, in spite of her royalty, for, because she had once disdained Apollo, she was fated to foresee all things and ever to have her prophecies disbelieved. On this fateful day, she alone was oppressed with strange forebodings. But if he who was to be the ruin of his country had returned, he had come victoriously. Paris won the contest. At the very moment of his honor, poor Cassandra saw him with her prophetic eyes, 
and seeing as well all the guilt and misery that he was to bring upon them, she broke into bitter lamentations, and would have warned her kindred against the evil to come. But the Trojans gave little heed. They were wont to look upon her visions as spells of madness. Paris had come back to them a glorious youth and a victor, and when he made known the secret of his birth, they cast the words of the oracle to the winds, and received the shepherd as a long-lost prince. Thus far all went happily. But Venus, whose promise had not yet been fulfilled, bade Paris procure a ship and go in search of his destined bride. The prince said nothing of this quest, but urged his kindred to let him go, and giving out a rumor that he was to find his father's lost sister Hesione, he set sail for Greece, and finally landed at Sparta. There he was kindly received by Menelaus, the king, and his wife, fair Helen. This queen had been reared as the daughter of Tyndarus and Queen Leda, but some say that she was the child of an enchanted swan, and there was indeed a strange spell about her. All the greatest heroes of Greece had wooed her before she left her father's palace to be the wife of King Menelaus. And Tyndarus, fearing for her peace, had bound her many suitors by an oath. According to this pledge, they were to respect her choice, and to go to the aid of her husband if ever she should be stolen away from him. For in all Greece there was nothing so beautiful as the beauty of Helen. She was the fairest woman in the world. Now thus did Venus fulfill her promise, and the shepherd win his reward with dishonor. Paris dwelt at the court of Menelaus for a long time, treated with a royal courtesy which he ill repaid. For at length while the king was absent on a journey to Crete, his guests won the heart of fair Helen, and persuaded her to forsake her husband and sail away to Troy. King Menelaus returned to find the nest empty of the swan. Paris and the fairest woman in the world were well across the sea, 